So in this episode, I'll share, in my opinion, the best everyday camera that you can fit into your pocket, which renders great results and packs a great punch. Yes, it is the Ricoh GR X3. This is the X3 version. Yeah, so in this video, I'm basically going to walk over a few things that I think you should know. So that's basically the form factor, the actual specs. So what is in this camera? What does it do? The features, that's number three. Then the image quality and experience, that's number four. And number five is this camera has done something for me, which is great. It removed a block more on that on point number five and point number six shortly. What I think this camera could improve in. If this is your first time here, I'm Paul, I take photos, and you can find me on www.paultakesphotos.com to see what I'm up to. Anyways, let's go to the first point of this camera, the form factor. It is pocketable, it's insanely small, as you can see here, it really is insanely small. Just to give you a bit of an update on how small this is, this is my iPhone mini, this is the Ricoh. The Ricoh is actually smaller. This is how small and pocketable it is, and that's also one of the great things about this camera. It's so small, it literally fits into your pocket. What more do we want, right? Number two, the specs. Now, if we go over this camera, this is not gonna to be too technical. There's a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor into it, which is awesome in this kind of small body. So not the usual one in sensor, like you see on the Sony RXs, great cameras too, but I really prefer APS-C in this case. The lens is an equivalent of 40 millimeters, so it's a little bit narrower than the actual GR3, which has, I believe, 27 millimeters equivalent on full frame. So there is various buttons on it, but it's sleek, elegant design is great here. The battery is about 200 shots. And then there's the weight. It's only 250, 270 grams. So it's a really small, compact, light camera that you can basically use, which is awesome, people. Let's go to number three now. Yes, the features. And this camera packs a punch. There is some features in the short time that I have it. I only have it for two or three weeks. So I've only taken a couple of hundred shots, but a few things I really like about this camera. First of all, it has a touch screen. And I mean by a touch screen, something that Sony can learn from both for photography, so you can pinpoint your focus, but also the menus, everything is fully touch screen, which I absolutely, and it's easy to navigate. It works really well. So Rico, you've done well. Then there's a the thing because this camera doesn't have a flip out screen or whatsoever, it's fixed. So one of my biggest points with those cameras is either you have to buy the viewfinder later on that more, or you're gonna have to do it on touch. Now they build a feature here where you have a focus light, which is on the right top corner. If you're in focus, it's green and it's steady and you can take your shot. Well done, Rico, well thinking. Then there is the macro mode. And I, <laughs> I really like the macro mode, which allows you, if you look at the camera here, this is the normal mount. Yeah, let me just do it like this, hapa and you see it comes out up normal macro great isn't it one other thing that i was really surprised about is normally you can buy teleconverter lenses you don't have to do this over here you have a you can actually crop in while you're shooting to 50 millimeters or 71 millimeters which is great absolutely great i really like it you see some pictures here flying by really makes a difference just a little bit more zoomed in without having to get some kind of extension or a different accessory for it wonderful good thinking very useful and practical then there is a thing called the snap function which basically allows you to preset your focusing distance with your aperture and you can pretty much shoot on the go i haven't tried it that much but what i've tried of it yet takes a bit of getting used to but i definitely see that working in the future fuji is famous for its film simulations yes it's film simulations and emulations and the Ricoh comes with a similar thing. You have various different uh, filters you can use. You can adjust them and like Fuji, and I didn't know this, Ricoh also has somebody who creates film recipes, which I absolutely adore. So for me, going out and about, it's great. Really, it's fantastic. I love it. Now, let's go to number four, which is the image quality. And you know, using this camera, and not only image quality, but the entire experience with the camera. When I first had this in my hands, I was a bit afraid of, 
oh, how is this gonna work? Am I gonna let it fall? Well, they gave this little strap with it. You put it around your thing, uh, around your thing, around your wrist. And what you'll see is this is a great little camera. It really handles well. Um, sure, for the for the for the features and stuff, you're gonna have to you know go through a learning curve like I am now. But it really is so much into it, and the image quality. And this is really it's stellar. It really is good sharp images. If you use let's say a contrasty BNB BNB <laughs> black and white profile, yeah, you basically get some fantastic looking shots. It really is much to my surprise because I was a bit skeptical as I normally am. This camera really delivers. You see now a ton of examples coming by. Um, now, number five, and this is what I said in the beginning of the uh, entire episode. And if you found this useful, leave a like because I, you know, my ego needs to be stimulated. Uh, stimulated, not the algorithm, my ego. It did do one thing, and that's the fifth point. It did remove a block for me, for whatever the reason is. When I'm traveling, I really don't care what kind of camera I have with me. I just take shots for whatever. Don't care. I feel comfortable when I'm in my own country for some reason and maybe this is because Dutch people are basically have no filter if you're walking with a bigger camera or you're going somewhere with a camera people will comment on it they will make all kind of remarks whether that's positive or negative and it just you know doesn't make you feel nice additionally when you're walking with a bigger camera with this people will notice it and they will go suddenly privacy apeshit. Well, when you're with a mobile phone, nobody cares, but this, yes. So that's always been a bit of a stumbling block in my own country. When I'm walking around with this little camera, I'm definitely noticing uh, that I'm having a camera, but other people don't. Massive relief. So thank you, Rico, for designing something so great and listening to many people of your users who actually said, look, we want something a bit more narrow as a lens. Fantastic, because if it would have been the 27 millimeter lens, I probably would have stayed with the old workhorse I have, the Fuji X100. I probably would have stayed with it, not an inconspicuous camera at all. Now, some of the downside. Is everything perfect about this camera? Nearly. I think the most, the number one pet peeve I have with this camera is basically battery life. That's well documented, so you, I, I had to buy some new batteries and a charger on a day you... Pff, you need three or four, maybe even five batteries. So that's a bit of a downside, but I'm guessing with this small form factor, if you put a bigger battery in it, I guess it just loses its pocketability, which I find the most important thing. Another thing is no uh, flippy screen, and that's a bit of, of a thing. I would love to see something like this. And what I've also noticed is here in low light, and yeah, this lens has an f2.8 aperture. In low light, um, you really have to bunk up your ISO quite high, I think five, 6,000. The ISO handles well, that's a benefit, but I'm like, oh, if they could have put an F2.0 lens onto it, so like a two lens or maybe an F1.8, that would be great uh, for low light. But other than that, I really don't have much to really say about this perfect everyday camera. So thank you for watching. See you next time.